sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 8 of For All the Saints. Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you, thought, word, or deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for us and for his sake he forgives us all our sins. As a called ordained servant of the Church of Christ and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <laughs> In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the
now the baptismal hymn. <laughs> Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By the water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, which is the body of Christ. As we live with him and his people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. And who presents this child today? We present today our Alan to receive the sacrament of holy baptism. In Christian love, you have presented this child for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring him to the services of God's house and teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As he grows in years, you should place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith, that living in the covenant of his baptism and in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? Grant to us, Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may also live with him in the power of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Now the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give them thanks and praise. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks that in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created the heaven and the earth. And by the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemn the wicked and save those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by the pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit so that he who is here baptized may be given new life. Wash away his sin by this cleansing water and bring him forth as an heir of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise, honor, and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> now, Baylor, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He descended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Baylor Allen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your people from the power of sin and raising them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Baylor, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Now, Baylor, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen.
let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child. Let Devin and Rebecca ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Face the congregation. There you go. Through baptism, God has made this new brother a member of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus so that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. Welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, and a worker with us in the kingdom of God. You may return to your seat. Let us pray. God of all people, continue to look upon the human race in loving mercy and send forth your gospel proclamation to the ends of the earth, that every tribe and language and people and nation may be gathered to your church as the redeemed of the world of the Lord. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. The first reading is from Revelation 7, beginning at the ninth verse. You can find it on page 1223 in your Pew Bible. After this I looked, and behold a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the first lesson. The second reading is 1 John, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse, which can be found on page 1211 of your pew Bible. 
See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. Here ends the reading. I have a ready for Casey Jan. Share 
that do? Well, in Matthew 5, Jesus tells a story, and he tells us specifically of how we need to be. And they're known as the Beatitudes. And one of them is to be merciful. You know what that means? It means to be kind to other people when they're hurting. It also means be peacemakers. Do you know what that means? When you and your brother are fighting, or you're talking to your sister, you want to be peacemakers. Maybe you're not fighting, but maybe some of your friends are. You want to have an attitude of pure thoughts, things that you want to be thinking of good things. I know a girl with me. Hopefully she'll learn and she will have you can teach her to be happy this week. Okay, David? Can you tell her that? The other thing is you want to have an attitude of wanting to do the right thing even when mom and dad's not watching. Can you do that? No. Even when your teacher's not watching at school, you want to do the right thing. What do you need to read that? He also said that Jesus tells us that when we're sad, God's going to be with us when we're sad. He's going to be with us when we're happy. God is with us when? All the time. All the time. But it's just like we just got finished singing. He has what? The whole world in his hands. You know, I love that Jesus gives us, or gave us, specific direction in the Bible. So we won't mess up. Just like I sometimes I mess up the popcorn. You're not going to mess up if you follow the Bible. And you're going to remember how to be and what kind of attitude you need to have at home, at school, and in church. So Jesus says, you're going to be happy if you follow these directions. All right. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the Beatitudes. Thank you for the Beatitudes. Please help us to follow your directions. from St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 1. <laughs> Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord. The 
seated. Okay, it's All Saints Sunday, and we just made a new saint. That's basically what I want to say in my message today. A saint is someone who has been called by God to serve God and to live with God in His kingdom. So you've been separated out of the world, which is, in the biblical point of view, under sin, and now you're in the kingdom of God, called by God to serve God. And in this world, there are only two kinds of people, as we should see it, truly. People who are already saints by the call of God, and that would be all of us here, right? That's why we're here. We're saints of God. We want to be in the Lord's house. And then there are people who may yet become saints by the call of God, right? Either you're a saint or you're not, so those of us who are saints, the other group, are those who are yet to become saints, and we hope that they will by the call of God. Because the Bible says that God's Spirit and God's Word are at work in the world, in the world constantly, and the Gospel is continually calling people to become followers of Jesus Christ. And there are evangelists, and there are radio programs, and there are churches, and there are all those saints of God talking to other people about Jesus and what He means all over the world. And other people are becoming saints because of that. So that's the Bible's point of view. Either you're a saint now or quite possibly a saint to come. So here's the thing. People aren't born saints. They become saints when God brings them into his kingdom. When people hear that good news of the gospel and respond to that gospel call, when they ask what they must do to become followers of Jesus Christ, here's what St. Peter in Acts chapter 2 says, starting at verse 8, quote, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So what I want to say here today is that when we hear this gospel call to faith, notice that that calling of God calls us to faith, but it also calls us to what? Baptism, right? He could have left the baptism thing out, but it's right there in the center of this text. And so one way of looking at this is to say that in God's calling sinners into sainthood, baptism is then the door through which they enter into sainthood. Follow me now. Because people can turn to Christ in their hearts and begin believing on Jesus for their salvation and be saved, Yes, and yet God has given baptism and he's given it to the church through the Great Commission to be the sign and the seal of salvation for turning believers into saints. Whereas before faith you were a sinner estranged from God, now through faith and baptism you are enrolled in the company of God's people. And faith brings you to the baptism of God, and baptism brings you under the saving power of the name of Jesus. And that name, that power of Jesus, is what brings you the forgiveness of sins. And the forgiveness of sins is what opens your heart to the gift of the Holy Spirit. All of these things are offered to you to those who hear the call and believe. But again, notice that all of these things are connected where? To baptism. So I think that's why when in 1 Peter 3, we hear St. Peter say that something very, to me, it's very amazing. He says that in the same way that Noah was saved through the flood, 
So baptism now saves you. It literally says that in the Greek. Baptism now saves you. Well, I thought faith saved you. Well, of course it does. But notice how scripture puts the two together. And so baptism is really important if that's how the scripture talks about it. Baptism now saves you. It's not the ritual of baptism washing away dirt from your flesh, but it's God's chosen means for connecting you to Jesus who washes away your sin. St. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 6 that baptism buries us into the death of Christ. It's as if we get buried with him at the cross, and that's where all the sins get taken away. And then in Ephesians 4, we are told by Paul that we are all one body of Christ. That is the church, one church, because we all partake in, here's the list, one spirit, one Lord Jesus Christ, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that pearl of strings there, that string of pearls there, faith and baptism just go together like hand in a glove. They really can't be separated. They offer the same things. They're God's means for turning saint, uh, sinners into saints. So what I'm driving at here is that what we have done today with Mr. Baylor Zipperer is to apply the gospel promise of salvation to his life that he might live with us in the kingdom of God as a saint and become a follower of Jesus. After all, St. Peter told us that the saving work of Christ is for you and your children. And the work of Christ, the call of the gospel, the promises of baptism, they're all tools by which God turns sinners into saints. And isn't that what we want most for Mr. Baylor, right? That he would be a saint of God, that he would live with the Lord forever, that he would have his entrance into the kingdom. So baptism is the doorway into sainthood because God is the one who commands it and gives it spiritual power as a means of grace. And it is a doorway because it leads sinners into the life of the church where they then begin to learn, out, uh, learn how to live out their life of faith in the body of Christ. So... A Christian parent wouldn't want to bring their children to the saving work of Jesus, which is promised to us in baptism. And so it's always a beautiful thing to welcome a new saint into the family of God. Now, baptism is not a one-time event that's time-limited to this morning in this moment. It's a door opening into a whole brand new life, is what it is. It's the entrance to sainthood, and it's the beginning of a lifelong journey where St. Paul tells us we're to die to sin daily and live for Christ daily all the days of our lives. And this journey of sainthood is just that, a journey of becoming a saint, someone who is committed to living their life God's way. Now, this fine young fellow back here, he's anxious to go and get started with that sainthood, I can tell, and that's great. I'm glad to see that. And, uh, and who knows what he's going to be when he grows up? You know, his personality and his temperament, his skills, his likes and his dislikes, uh, his life journey as it wins, uh, who he's going to marry, what job he's going to take. You know, all of these things will unfold in due time, right? And so much of the fun of parenthood is watching your child become that unique human being. And in that sense, we all, all of us, are truly a little different and a little unique from everyone else in the world. Yet if you heard the gospel reading today of the Beatitudes, maybe you caught something that Jesus is trying to say to all of us unique people that no matter who we are in our uniqueness and what our life stories may be, all 
of us should be living in the same way as saints. Our saintliness should be striving for the same thing, which in essence is Christ-likeness. Humility before God. Meekness before men. Thirsting for what is right, righteousness. Showing mercy all the time to others. Purity of heart. Peacemakers like Jesus. And not only that, but peacemakers in making peace who are willing to suffer for their peacemaking. Righteous people in doing what is right and standing up for what is right are willing to suffer for what is right. See, it doesn't matter what your life journey or your uniqueness is, there is a Christ-likeness that God is trying to develop in each and every one of us that is the same. Saintliness, as you might call it. And why would you suffer for your saintliness? Because you know that God is fashioning you to be like Christ. After all, Christ is the truest saint of God who was called out by God for his divine purposes, who lived these beatitudes perfectly in his life, and who gave himself completely over to the will and the ways of the Lord, even though that took him to the cross for sinners. He is the gold standard of sainthood toward which you and I are called to grow up into as children of God. Now, I don't know about you, but as I look around at the world, I can tell you what the world needs more of. Huh? It needs more saints. We've got plenty of people who are evil, right? I mean, we've got plenty of people who are not listening to God, not doing God's will, doing their own thing, transgressing all the commandments, and making life miserable for everybody around them. There's plenty of those kinds of people who know what the world needs more of is saints. People who are going Jesus' way. People who love the Lord Jesus. People who want to be like the Lord Jesus. And people who will serve the Lord Jesus in his kingdom by, what? Sharing that good news, that gospel, that word of forgiveness, and living holy lives before others. People who will listen to God, attend to God's kingdom, carry out Christ's mission, and shine like lights of righteousness in a world that just seems to be filled with selfish sinners and all manner of evil doers. So, it's All Saints Sunday. The saints are here, praise God. And do you believe that? Can you feel that when you come? Are you glad to be here with all your brothers and sisters in Christ? Because... You're among the saints. I didn't mean the perfect people. That's not the definition of sainthood. I mean those who are going God's way. And so every time we gather, what a beautiful thing that is. And you know, I trust that this congregation, for many years to come, will continue to be a community of saints who know God who love Jesus, who live by the Spirit. And that's exactly what young Mr. Baylor Allen Zipper needs in his life, a community of faith and hope and love that will help teach him and show him and guide him into his sainthood. He needs a church to encourage him to grow in faith and show them how to serve the Lord Jesus in a Christ-like manner. And he has one. Does that make you happy? I hope so. It should. So let's hear a shout for the saints of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us stand now and sing together. Thank you. 
our sermon hymn. <laughs> second. I just want to make, we've all seen them and we probably, many of us know them already. This is Jennifer. This is Jacob. This is Brian. These are the Rebergs, right? This is Brenda and this is Paul Iwanski. And of course, the Callaways couldn't be with us and Mr. Nathan is sick today. So good to have you with us. If you'll turn back around now, let's have a little welcoming ritual here. Okay, dear friends, having responded in faith to the saving call of God in your, of, in your lives, you have come to us desiring membership in our community of faith. So I want to read from 2 Timothy chapter 1. God saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began which now has been known through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. In other words, God has made you saints, and we're glad you're here, right? Now, having received God's grace by faith in your baptismal covenant, will you endeavor to pattern your life in service after our Lord Jesus Christ? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you study the Holy Scriptures as the Word of God, seeking for your life God's will in Christ Jesus? Yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you strive to use the gifts God has given you to build up the body of Christ, praying for and blessing others, especially those in need? Yes, with the help of God. Will you seek to grow in faith among us and be a witness to the gospel so that more and more people might be drawn to Christ in his church? Yes, with the help of God. Upon your faithful promises, we welcome you as members of Bible Lutheran Church to join with us in the worship and ministries of this congregation as dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, congregation, will you welcome these brothers and sisters in Christ into full and faithful participation in the life and ministries of this congregation? 
and promise to love and serve them as fellow members of the church, the body of Christ? If so, answer, we will by the help of God. We will by the help of God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. All right, you may return to your seats. Let's give them a little hand. Now, if you'll please rise, we will have our right of remembrance for all the saints. I'm going to come down to the baptismal fount. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Jesus says... My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. And together, blessed be the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we'll just take a brief moment of silence to remember those departed saints that we love and, and still remember and who have gone on to be with the Lord. With reverence and affection, we remember before you, O everlasting God, all our departed friends and relatives. Keep us in union with them in the faith and love which we share in Christ Jesus, and grant that we may enter into your presence and be numbered with those who serve you and who look now upon your face in glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Karen? loving Father, you want us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing except losing you, and to lay all our burdens on you, knowing that you care for us. Look upon your holy people with divine mercy and keep us and all your living saints in your merciful care. Grant that no clouds in this mortal life may hide us from the light of your immortal love, which you show us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now a moment of silence for those living saints we'd like to remember before God. Karen?
Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one holy communion, the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your church in heaven on earth your divine light and the peace that passes understanding. Amen. We go now to the Lord in prayer. Lord God of heaven and earth, multitude of saints and angels gather around your throne to give praise to you and the Lamb who was slain. Receive our worship today as the praise of the church militant who serve you beneath the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God of heaven and earth, you have grafted us to the vine who is Christ and who bears fruits of faith and of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we draw our life from him. Teach us, therefore, what it means to be faithful and humble and righteous in our lives, that we may be examples of our humble and righteous King. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you that you have called Baylor, Allen, Zipperer to be joined to the fellowship of your saints. Bless him through all the years of his life with your holy word and spirit, that living in faith with you and your church, he may be a blessing to the world and come at last to your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, gracious God, you know the battles we face every day as your saints. The struggle against sin and temptation, the ill treatment of others toward us, the weakness of our mortal frame and the violence of crime and war that afflicts the nations. Give us courage, Lord, to face our battles, faith to place our lives in your hands, wisdom to see what we can do to protect ourselves and others, and hope in the hardest and darkest of days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh, gracious God, stir up your church to mission and ministry week by week and year by year. Help Bible Lutheran continue to serve you well and carry out the Great Commission. Bless our call committees and prepare us to gladly receive all who join us as partners in ministry when new pastors and new members arrive among us. Especially we thank you this day for Paul and Brenda, Roy and Mary Ann, Brian and Jennifer and Nathan and Jacob. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you prepare a place for us even in the presence of our last enemy, death itself. And we thank you for leading safely home all those who listen to your voice in this earthly life. Continue to give the comfort and ministry of your Holy Spirit to bereaved families, and especially the Morgans, the Driggers, the Trams, the, Ran, the Rons, the Deesons, and the Varel and Hasty families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we are in constant need of your daily care, body, mind, and soul. We pray for those who need your healing touch, Roy Calloway and Cindy Cordero, Lord. Give them, Lord, what they need this coming week, healing from heaven above. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, you are the humble servant of God who teaches us the righteousness of heaven as we commune at your table this day. Bless our souls with the happiness that comes from putting our faith in you and living in saintliness with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the choir selection.
merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our selves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. We receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and for our good benefit that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the blessedness of your saints, you have given us a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling, that moved by their witness and supported by their fellowship, we may run with perseverance the race that is set before us, and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. And so with the church on earth, uh, 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 with the church on earth in the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. on the night he was betrayed, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Saints feast. Take and eat the body of Christ. This is Christ's body, given to death for you, for the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of
body and blood of our Lord preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace. the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite us through the heavenly food with saints in heaven and saints on earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Therefore, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with endurance the race set before us.
しょうね。